Hey everybody, welcome back for another video. Hope you're all doing well. So this is a bit of a mixed day. Not too much bad news, but I mean not that much good news either. So at the moment, Bitcoin is down 3.5%. Bitcoin Cash is down 11.3%, which is not really a surprise because people aren't done throwing that coin around um there are a few coins that are up thank goodness iota is currently up 14 percent ethereum is only up one percent litecoin is up five surprisingly i haven't heard any uh positive news for them as as of late but it's kind of interesting because they normally follow the exact same trend as bitcoin but they're up five percent and neo neo is up 14 percent so news of the day goes there's a Harvard academic who believes that Bitcoin could exceed $100,000 by the year 2021. And he says exactly on February 2021, this is when he thinks that it will happen. Keeping in mind that we have had this analysis before from many other people who believe that by the year 2020, Bitcoin will hit $55,000. So this is literally a doubling of it. He said this is apparently because of something. Um, I have never heard of this before, but he said that Bitcoin is the very first cryptocurrency to follow some something called Moore's Law, M-O-O-R-E-S-L-A-W. Um, so the academic guy, his name is Dennis Porto, P-O-R-T-O, -O, stated that after an analysis that he has done, and apparently through emails that, I don't know if people found them, I, I don't think they were leaked. It's not something that really needs to be leaked. It's not like classified information. Um, but he was emailing back and forth with Business Insider, and he wrote, Moore's Law specifically applied to the number of transitors on a circuit but can be applied to any digital technology. Any technology growing exponentially has a doubling time. Um, <laughs> yeah, so he says, he goes on to say that according to his research, Bitcoin has doubled every eight months since its release and goes on to say, of course, this is very, um, this is something that's very unique for investors. Um, if you guys have paid attention at all to the stock market or have ever invested in the stock market, when you look at graphs, one of the first things that people generally tell you when you first get into stocks is how it continuously goes up every single year. I believe that every single year since its, since its inception, since the very, very beginning of the stock market, we have constantly seen, I think it's like 6%, 6 to 8% increases. I want to say it's 6. So that even after all the dips, even after you know everything shoots back up and then falls back down, all the depressions, we've constantly had this number of 6%. And this is apparently something very, very similar to it. He says that no matter what, as far as it has gone, as for the eight years that it has been out, the price has constantly doubled after a certain point, eight months. And then, yeah, so this is why he gave the February 2021 date. Um, the fact that so many <laughs> mathematicians and academics and all these other people are really getting into these numbers and they're constantly coming up with the same exact number, I that's not too far away. I mean, 2017 is kind of, I mean, well, it's not, it's not almost finished. We have a couple months left, but it's... um. I, I'm very interested for what the, what's going to happen within the next four years, because as you've seen as well, every single graph of all the other major coins, like usually the things in the top 10, except for like the last couple weeks, what have you, they all tend to follow Bitcoin's graphs. As Bitcoin goes up, no matter what happens to the other ones, the other ones are also dragged up. It's out of, I guess a, a bit of it is fear, no, like nobody really wants to miss out on anything. And in comparison, these other coins seem extremely cheap. This is part of the reason why I keep telling um, when people want to get into cryptocurrencies, I believe in Litecoin and Ethereum and in Ripple and in other like smaller coins. But realistically, when this happens, if Bitcoin ever hits 10,000, every other coin below it for people who want to get into the market, they're not going to want to spend 10,000 on one complete coin or even 5,000 on a half one. They're going to go, OK, this looks comparatively cheap. You know, the coin isn't bad. The coin is so and so and so and they're going to begin to buy it up. So as Bitcoin continues to rise, every other coin will literally be dragged up with it at a certain point. And I think I'd really like. <laughs> What what do you think every other coin would then be worth if Bitcoin were to hit 100,000 a coin? It's currently sitting at 3,200. So if that, I was going to go through all the numbers in my head, but this would literally mean that at a certain point, Ethereum would probably be worth around, what is that, 10,000 per coin? Litecoin would be five, 6,000, something like that. Like these coins would have a massive amount as well. And that I'm not going to even get into the fact that I actually believe in all the other coins more than Bitcoin at this point because of the entire SegWit thing. And I'm going to get into that in a couple minutes. Um, every other coin, especially I keep saying this over and over and over. So many people don't understand what Ethereum is, what light, how quick Litecoin is, what Ripple will be used for. 
um, just in general, every other coin. And I, yeah, I mean, realistically, if it does hit 100,000, I think it'll be because of um, it being used as a commodity. Like I said before, people, rich people especially, are now buying tons and tons and tons of Bitcoin and just storing it. And they're holding it as if they are holding gold bars, which I mean, essentially they are in some sort of way. So this would be very interesting, especially... I'm interested to see the numbers for the very, very small coins because I also have my own ideas as far as brand new coins. There's a there's a coin coming out. I can't remember the name of me for the life of it. There's a new coin coming out and I think it is two or three or I want to say three decimal places behind one cent. So it's relatively worth nothing. But if you look at the prices of every other single coin that has come out, even on the top 100 list, regardless if people know about it, talk about it, whatever the case might be, it has never, ever stayed that low. As things get mined, as things get used, et cetera, et cetera, the price always goes up. There's so many coins that have started out at that low price that are all around one cent. And then when Bitcoin went from 1,000 earlier this year to around 3,000 something, these coins, because of their low, low price, at half a cent or one cent they were also going up by 60 percent a day because realistically it's still under 100 percent. so 100 percent would have only doubled it to two cents and it's like it's it's very interesting to see how many people will get rich from these other altcoins from the other smaller ones that even the ones that no one are like if the ones that no one talk about how rich will people become from them because there are tons of people who are you know pumping dumping these coins as well sorry for getting off um off the beaten track, but yeah, I find it so interesting. There's so much money to be made in these things, and it's not even about following Bitcoin anymore. It's just about getting into some coin, not even having to believe in it, and the price will eventually go up just because of hype and people buying it and hoarding it. Like even at a certain point, Dogecoin has also gone up. Like it, no one's using it. Like there were plans in the beginning for people to use it on on YouTube. I remember reading articles about it. The they, they were saying that the creator wanted to, you know, have people use it on YouTube to like send tips and stuff like that, and how cool it would be, and everybody would be able to have some. And even the price of that has still continued to at some point go up because the other coins have kind of dragged it up, and it does nothing. It, it just sits there. Like there are, um, I think Exodus, the the online, uh, the offline wallet, uh, they just took it off of their system. Like they're not even supporting it anymore, and it's like. That is a huge, like, they're not supporting it, but the price still continues to go up at certain points. Okay, sorry, I'm going to continue on. I just had to say that. I think it's, there's so much money to be made. And if you, any of your friends, if you've told them about cryptocurrencies and they're not listening, if you feel frustrated at a certain point because you're telling people about these things, that is not your fault. That is their fault. They do not want to make money. And just keep your head focused, keep your head down, and keep making that money because it'll be your, <laughs> it'll be your bank account that's talking for you in a couple years. Continuing on. Overstock.com, who I believe was 2014 or 13 or something like that, they originally started using or rather allowing Bitcoin as a payment method. So they have now partnered with Shapeshift so that they can now accept over 60 cryptocurrencies. Uh, that is to say, this is exactly on the heels of another article that I just read a couple days ago um, with the CEO stating that they plan on whatever purchases they receive in cryptocurrencies, they plan on keeping over 50% of it, I guess, in some sort of cold storage or whatever the case might be. Uh, this is a clear indication that they're just trying to maximize their holdings for cryptocurrencies on a larger scale instead of just saying, you know, we only accept Bitcoin, let's accept 59 other ones. That's a huge number, 60 cryptocurrencies. People didn't even talk about 20 cryptocurrencies in the same breath. So they're, they're trying to do 60 at the exact same time. Um, Overstock CEO Patrick Byrne, B-Y-R-N-E, don't know exactly know how to pronounce his last name, stated that this was all being done to allow customers greater freedom when they make purchases. On a quick side note, we have to all remember that Overstock is a business and their number one thing is profit. They, I mean, as much as they... They may care about their customers. That is, I've seen a lot of, you know, businesses that do actually care about the people who shop with them, et cetera, et cetera. But let's keep this in mind. They're not accepting over 60 crypto. That's a huge number. 60 cryptocurrencies just because they're trying to be customer friendly. They would offer discounts or some other thing. You know, they're clearly trying to do this. Um, the article that I was reading at the end of it, it goes on to say that Overstock will, in the end, end up converting all of its own cryptocurrencies that it receives from payments from customers back into Bitcoin because the CEO wants to increase his holding in Bitcoin. This is something that should be fairly obvious. So, I mean, it's, I think it's cool that they are accepting these things. If you have anything that you want to buy, especially if you happen to have a large number of a certain cryptocurrency and you're trying to get rid of it. If you need a new computer, a new couch, maybe new socks, winter is coming up, you know, you can definitely shop with them now because I assume they're even using the the ones that we have never even heard of, like 
Bork coin or like blah, 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 whatever the, whatever these things are called now. Um, yeah, so keep in mind they are business, but if you need to pick up something online, you don't feel like using cash, you can definitely go to them. So finally, and this is something that I'm sure that we all are just dying to hear, um, a developer for the Lightning Network, his name is Rusty Russell, has stated that despite everything that has happened within the last two years, everything that has taken place, even the entire SegWit fiasco, which I'm tired of saying that word, he has to say, um, Bitcoin can't scale, can't, that is can't, C-A-N-T, Bitcoin can't scale to meet demand unless demand vanishes and it all fails. He is not very bullish at all on Bitcoin. He thinks that things will only get worse. He thinks that from this point on, even after everything, that fees on the network will, will continue to increase. We saw a couple... I think about a week or two where the um, the fees for the network actually were sliding down. I don't know if it was just, you know, calm before the storm or whatever the case might have been. But he says the fees will continue to rise and this is going to cause a major problem for Bitcoin. And I quote, if Bitcoin is used by 100,000 people today and we want everyone to use it, we need Bitcoin to crack. Yeah. We need Bitcoin capacity to grow by 75,000 times larger Think about that number. Yet we're already struggling with 140 gigabytes of storage caused by Bitcoin's first eight years when it comes mainly not being used. So um, he, like I've said before in other videos as well, I do not think that Bitcoin has a future as an actual payment method, but more so something as like people gonna people will just be storing this thing and not using it. I this is it took two years to get SegWit activated and we're still there are other coins that are just coming out now that are still pushing way further behind what Bitcoin is and what it possibly could be. So he goes on to state the only attempt to attach growth to a metric was Peter's Woolley, Peter Woolley, P-I-E-T-E-R-W-U-I-L-L-E. -E -E. I have no idea how to pronounce this guy's name. I apologize for that. He said he had a 17.7% year increase. This was, um, I guess, a proposal put forth by this guy. But he said even that takes 70 years to reach everyone's scale. So there's no relief in my lifetime. He literally said that no matter what everyone has proposed, there is probably no relief in sight for the entire... Um, size debate and the speed of it this is i mean it's not it, it, it's it's not doom and gloom per se but i think realistically there are a lot of other proposals that are being put forward by bitcoin but if it takes another two years or three years for these things to be put into place or these things to be locked in or these things to have a grace period or whatever the case might be i don't see bitcoin um making it as a payment system like i've said before especially when we have ripple and other things don't don't be um I don't, the word isn't naive, but it's like, don't, don't not believe that other companies and other enterprises are not going to use other coins, even though Bitcoin is number one, you know, it, it has the, the number one spot as the most valuable coin They They want speed and they want functionality and Bitcoin does not have that. You can't have a quarter of a million transactions stuck inside of the network and, you know, Companies aren't going to go. Yeah, we definitely want to use that. They're going to they're, they're going to get the other pre-mined coins, and this is kind of what's going to happen. Um, we'll see what's going to happen. There's tons of, like 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 I said, there's tons of proposals being foot put being put forward for Bitcoin at the moment, and other people are trying to actively increase the speed of the network, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But if it takes a long time, this thing has absolutely um, no chance, especially when other coins on the um, top ten list of crypt um, coin market cap. These things are already blowing them like it's it's when you look at I, I told you before in, in another video, if the Raiden network gets activated on Ethereum and they have one million transactions per second, there's nothing that can stop them. But I mean, Bitcoin will always be, you know, the annoying older sister that we all have. I mean, I don't have an annoying older sister, but I'm just, you know saying that <laughs> oh my family doesn't listen to this and they whatever. Um yeah, so that is the news for today, guys. Um like I said, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just kind of all in the middle. We'll see how things go along. The entire Bitcoin price going down right now is believed because um, a lot of people think that the entire SegWit thing is still in in the air kind of and people aren't 100% done with it. I mean, you know, it is locked in, but people are kind of saying, you know, there's still dust being kicked up and people aren't too happy and people are down talking Bitcoin on Twitter and stuff like that. So this is the reason why the price has slipped a bit. 
But yeah, I hope you guys have a um, great day. Hope it's sunny wherever you are. Hope you guys are enjoying life and I will talk to you all soon. See you. Hey everyone, thank you very much again for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you guys would like to help me and the channel, there are ways to do so in the description below. Thank you very much and talk to you guys soon.